Saint Martin have just released their Pelagos homage in collaboration with Watch Dives, and this watch was so well received that it sold out in just a few days. I have owned the original Tudor Pelagos myself for five years, and the watch is incredible, but its size is indeed a problem for most wrists. Can a Chinese homage company finally have given us the scaled down version that we were all hoping for and that Tudor did not manage to give us with last year's 39mm release. Well, I have both watches here with me, so let's find out right away. First, looking at these two watches, you can see there are two main differences. The first one being the size. This Tudor looks absolutely massive at 42mm in diameter compared to the 39mm of the St. Martin. That difference is exacerbated when you look at the thickness of the watches. The Pelagos coming in at 14.2mm and the St. Martin at only 128 with a slightly domed sapphire crystal. Log to log, the Pelagos manages to come at right under 50, 49.8 to be precise, when the St. Martin comes at 47.2. Log to log, we're looking at 22 millimeters for the Pelagos and 20 for the St. Martin. Bracelet twice, the Pelagos goes from a 22 to a 19 and back to 20 at the clasp, and the St. Martin goes from 20 to 16 to 18.5 at the clasp. On the scale, the Pelagos weights in at 142 grams, sides for my average 7 inch wrist, and the St. Martin comes at 141 grams. And that leads me, of course, to the second big difference about these watches the material. The Pelagos was the first watch under the Tudor Rolex umbrella to be made out of titanium. Otherwise, this massive watch would weight much more, I believe close to the 200 grams. The St. Martin is a little under what you would expect from a full-size diver. Those dimensions are shown on wrist as the Pelagos, as you can see, wears very big on my average wrist. It's not unwieldy, but those slab sides don't help, making it wear pretty tall on the wrist. It has two redeeming factors though, the contained lug to lug and the weight that makes it much more wearable. On the St. Martin side, the watch wears just wonderfully. Let's go to the dials here and there's also a big difference here. First of all, looking at the dial, excluding the chapter ring, of course, one of the characteristics of the Pelagos is to have a very matte, non-reflective dial. That might make it look a bit toyish at first, but I have grown to love it as the years go by. The huge defect pointed out and laughed at as an inner joke between Tudor lovers is all those lines of text. You've got five lines of text only at the bottom of the dial, the shield, the brand and the city of origin at the top of the dial and even Swiss made between the bottom markers. That makes for a lot of text, something that the original 2012 model did not have. By the way, this one is the 2015 model. The original Pelagos came out in 2012 and it had an ETA movement and only two lines of text at the bottom of the dial. The St. Martin goes for a different approach. The color is still blue, but it's much darker. They only go for two lines of text at the bottom of the dial, something that I am sure many will appreciate. And the St. Martin hexagon at the top. Staying with the color of the dial, you can see that the St. Martin has a metallic grain, making it change colors pretty drastically with the light, something the Tudor doesn't do. This makes it that the inner dial of the St. Martin contrasts with the chapter ring and the bezel insert, which are much more matte. I really hope that St. Martin had made it more uniform, a bit like the Pelagos does. Let's go to the markers of this watch, the square markers. First inaugurated with the Tours of Mariners of the 1960s and 70s, so a comeback with the Pelagos, and that's one of the characteristics of this watch. Something that, of course, St. Martin have replicated here with quite a lot of success. If you see in the Pelagos, you'll see that the markers are a bit thinner 
than on the St. Martin, or at least they appear to be. On the St. Martin, they appear to be much more slabs, a bit like on the 39mm Pelagos. The triangle at 12 remains the same, as do the rectangles at 6 and 9. At 3, you've got a date wheel on both watches. The hands are pretty much the same, and I believe they even might be the same size, making them look much bigger on the St. Martin than on the Tudor. As for the loom, the Pelagos was one of the first watches, at least that I know of, to loom its bezel insert. I am glad to report that St. Martin have done the same here. Let's compare the watches loom head to head for about 5 minutes. You can see that even at first, the Tudor has the edge. I don't know if this is BGW9 or if Tudor is using Rolex's Chromolite, but it does work wonderfully here, even though St. Martin is no slouch. As time progresses, you can see that we've got about the same results, with the Tudor coming on top, even though the St. Martin is still perfectly legible in the end. Let's go to the chapter rings, which are an essential part of the Pelagos. And one of the main things that makes me say that St. Martin, we're going for a scaled-down version of the original Pelagos, because it surrounds around 50% of those markers. As you can see, on the Pelagos, this seems to be just made out of one piece. If you look at the St. Martin, they have tried to replicate that, but you can clearly see that they have used two pieces here. One is a conventional chapter ring, and then there's an inner chapter ring that goes around the markers. I very much prefer the Tudor approach, and I really hope St. Martin had gone that way. I, I don't know why they didn't. Maybe it was a cost-saving thing. Maybe they thought it made it look better. I really hope they would have gone for the original approach. The crystal protecting those dials. On the Pelagos you have a very flat sapphire crystal with, I would say, a bit of anti-reflective coating. Not a lot though. On the St. Martin you have a very slightly domed sapphire crystal with a bit of anti-reflective coating. It does the job very well. If we go to the bezel, this is where St. Martin got it right. This is a ceramic bezel insert, which is matte. There are not many of those. I believe they're not really easy to do. I would think only of the Oris Aquis and the Pelagos. There are maybe many more, but pretty much everybody else, including Rolex, go for the glossy approach. I prefer this one. It looks much more tooly. If you go to the bezels themselves, you've got the same coin edge here. You can see that it's slightly better made on the Pelagos, which is normal considering the price points. The bezel rotation is very, very good on both watches. But you've got a 120 click on the St. Martin and only a 60 click on the Tudor. However, the Tudor rotation is one of the best I have experienced. I think it can best be summed up as reassuring. It even has a system on which when you reach the 60 marker, the detent will be a bit different. So even if you're not looking at the watch, you can see that you've hit that 60 marker. If we focus on the shapes of the case, they are pretty much the same, with St. Martin respecting that slab side, but making it, of course, much thinner. You also have the chamfer going along each of the sides on each watch. The difference here will be that it is polished on the St. Martin when it is brushed on the Tudor. The other main difference with the case is the fact that you've got the famous helium escape valve on the Tudor, making the Tudor an actual saturation diver. Not that that is needed by anyone these days, but still, you've got that feature in there. The other thing that St. Martin got right are those much thinner crown guards, something that many of the other homages don't get right, even the St. Martin SN111, which is also a homage of the Pelagos, which takes a different approach though, with much more glossy surfaces and no chapter ring. The massive size of the Pelagos and the helium escape valve make it that this is a 500 meter diver, when the St. Martin is a very honest 300 meter, which will be much more than anybody will ever need. Let's go to the finishes. And here I believe St. Martin clearly takes lead. Of course, it is much different to finish titanium than stainless steel. I would be very curious to see how St. Martin can finish titanium. I cannot say that I have handled a titanium St. Martin. I know there's some, especially that Submariner homage. I have seen other channels, I have seen that the titanium looks 
much more like stainless steel than others. I would really like to see this watch in titanium, wouldn't you? I have actually created a petition forcing Martin to come back with this watch in a titanium version. I will of course be leaving that on the description below. So to be honest, we cannot really compare the finish of these two watches until I have seen how St. Martin really finishes titanium. In any case, you can really see the difference in tone with the Pelagos being much darker, of course, because of the titanium. The bracelets are another of the aspects where there's a big difference in these watches. St. Martin goes for a very classic style, three links, pretty elongated, enough breathing space between links, but not a lot. The Pelagos goes with a different approach, with much shorter links. Now let's go to the clasp. And we could really spend hours talking about the Pelagos clasp, because it is very complex. It is one of the only elements of the watch to be stainless steel with the case back. You've got a double security locking system with ceramic ball bearings to enhance the longevity of the system. All the elements are of course solid. You can see that it is beautifully signed to Genève. But the most interesting part is the shell. First, looking at the mechanism for micro-adjusting this clasp. You've got three levels. You've got actually four levels of micro-adjustment that you can manually set according to your wrist size. They will lock in place. But if you move to the fourth level, then you will go to the spring actionated mechanism where it will pretty much go on automatic mode and automatically adapt your wrist size because of those springs in there. And it will do so for around one centimeter. There's not only that, but this being the unapologetic diver that it is, you also have an actual diver's extension that you can use here. And not only that, but also free on the box, you get a rubber bracelet with an extra extension. So Tudor doing a lot here for the actual diver, pretty much as though they were expecting that real divers would use this watch. The St. Martin clasp, is much less refined, of course. It is beautifully finished, all the elements are solid, and it does have St. Martin's new micro-adjustment system, which works very well, pretty straightforward, four levels of micro-adjustment, all good, no need for more. But here, we can see that the Pelagos has a much, much more refined system than anything out there, actually. Movement-wise, it's not even a contest, with the Tudor Manufacture Movement MT5612 being a cosk, and as you can see on the time grapher, it works wonderfully even after the five years that I have gotten it and beaten it to death. It keeps on ticking amazingly. You also have those 72 hours of power reserve, the high beat movement of 20,800 beats per hour. Really, really an amazing movement. With the Seiko NH35, St. Martin take a much, much more affordable and conventional route, even though I really believe that St. Martin do regulate these movements. As you can see, this one is almost within cost. Very nice movement, but it really does not touch the Tudor manufacturer with only 40 hours of power reserve and that lower beat 3 Hz movement. So to sum it up, St. Martin and Watch Dive's attempt was a very, very valid one, and the people saw right when they rushed in to buy this watch. Does it manage to be the Pelagos in a smaller frame, the watch that every Tudor lover was dreaming about? Well, yes and no. Yes, because it retains the idea of that mad dial and especially bezel insert. No, because it is not a titanium watch and because there are some things that must be improved like the difference in tone of the inner dial with the bezel insert. But let's get out there and get the watch of our dreams. As I told you in the video, I have made a petition for St. Martin to release this watch in titanium. I really hope to see that happen. So go ahead and sign that petition. I will be leaving it in the link below. Thank you very much for having watch a video. I will be leaving you here with other videos, with other great dive watches. In the meantime, I will be seeing you very soon on, the, on those videos. 